you will be really shocked to see the end result. What is the i-th root of minus 1? First, let's recall what i actually means. You already know that i represents the square root of negative 1. To handle such a problem, we need to recall the concept of complex numbers. Let's imagine a complex plane. On this plane, the horizontal axis represents the real part, and the vertical axis represents the imaginary part. Now, let's take a point called z somewhere on this plane. Any complex number can be written as a plus b times i, where a is the real part along the horizontal axis, and b is the imaginary part along the vertical axis. But this same point, z, can also be represented in another way, which is in polar form. For that, we draw a line from the origin or the center to the point z. The length of this line is called the radius or modulus, and the angle it makes with the positive real axis is called theta, or the argument of the complex number. Using trigonometry, this point will have its real part along the horizontal axis as r cos theta and the imaginary part along the vertical axis as r sine theta. So, this point can be written as r cos theta plus i r sine theta, right? Then came a genius mathematician named Euler, who discovered an extraordinary connection between exponential and trigonometric functions, and he showed that a constant number e whose value is this, raised to the power of i theta is exactly equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. If you want to know how he obtained this relationship, I have made a video on the same, and the link is in the description. So in polar form, z can be written as r times e raised to the power of i theta becomes this, noise. Now, here comes the magic. Let's locate negative 1 on this plane. Negative 1 lies on the left side of the origin, exactly one unit away from it. So, its radius, or modulus, is 1. Next, what's the angle it makes with the positive real axis? Since it's directly on the left, that's half the circle, meaning the angle is pi. So, we can now write negative 1 as 1 times e raised to i times pi right? But wait, what if we rotate another full circle? That's an extra 2 pi, and we reach the same point again. In fact, we can keep adding or subtracting entire rotations or multiples of 2 pi, and we will still land on the same negative 1. That means we can represent negative 1 more completely, as 1 times e raised to i times pi plus 2 times n times pi where n can be any integer like 0, 1, 2, negative 1, and so on. Now, let us find the i-th root of this. The i-th root means we are raising this expression to the power of 1 over i, right? So, we have the quantity e raised to i times the quantity pi plus 2n pi, all raised to 1 over i. Now, there is a power rule of a raised to p. Whole raised to q equals a raised to p times q, which means when we raise an exponent to another exponent, we multiply them. So we get this. Therefore, i multiplied by 1 over i becomes 1 as they cancel each other out. And that leaves us with e raised to the pi plus 2n pi. That is the simplified form of our answer. Now, let us see what happens for some values of n. If n equals 0, we get e raised to pi. If n equals 1, we get e raised to 3 pi. If n equals minus 1, we get e raised to minus pi, and so on. So there are infinitely many possible values because n can be any integer. But among all these, the one where n equals 0, that is, e raised to pi, is called the principal value, and that is our main or simplest answer, which in decimal form is nearly this. It's quite shocking, isn't it? Even though i itself is an imaginary number, something that doesn't even exist on the real number line, when we take the i-th root of negative 1, 
we end up with a completely real value. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!